If you're one of those people that constantly forgets your password, good news. Increasingly, we're going to be logging onto things with our face. Of course, right now with the new iPhone, you can do that. But over in Tokyo, in the 2020 Olympics, you'll be getting your tickets with facial recognition technology, they reckon. In China, there's a massive uh, e-commerce giant which will let you walk into a store and pay with your face. And increasingly, it's going to become a part of our lives. Now, to discuss where the line is, where you become comfortable with this and when it becomes creepy, we have our panel this week on Download the Show, Benjamin Grubb is a technology journalist whose work you can see everywhere, including the Fairfax Press. And joining us from the United States of America on a special trip at the moment uh, is Jennifer Dudley-Nicholson, who is the technology editor for news.com.au. Jen, uh, firstly, thank you for being here. But secondly, where, how important do you think this is going to be in the next five to ten years, facial recognition technology? It's potentially scary how many things could use this. And, and like you mentioned, you know, if you forget your password, you know, this could be really handy. But the problem is I can change my password, Mm. but it's really expensive to change your face. (laughs) (laughs) Say, for instance, that a supermarket decides to add this and I decide that, you know, flybys, for example, isn't for me. Are they still going to be able to register my face as I walk around the store, even though I don't really want them to because I'm, I'm offended by their tiny little shop toys going around the place? Like, I wonder how much sort of information is associated Uh, with your face that you're not going to be able to kind of divorce yourself from. Losing that control over your face and your identity as you walk into a store kind of fills me with the creeps. There's been a lot of smart people recently, academics, who have come out and actually said we need to ban facial recognition technology. We need to have laws that actually ban it because... Or at the very least make it opt-in, you know? Yeah. It's always going to be a trade-off between um, security slash privacy and convenient. I mean, I do use uh, facial recognition on the password side for some things. Even if you're not a public figure these days, if there is a targeted attack against you or a device that you own, uh, there are ways for people to obtain that photo of you. I've kind of judged in certain circumstances where I'm willing to have that trade-off. Mm. Um, but on facial recognition more broadly, uh, yeah, I have great concerns about it. Um, you know, we're already seeing in China, they've um, basically got their really dumb cameras, their CCTV cameras, whacked on some facial recognition and turned it into this spying apparatus mm. for the government. Uh, and you don't really need that higher quality uh, vision these days, uh, you can do what was possible in CSI and all those TV <laughs> shows uh, based on really grainy footage. It's really scary what's about to happen. There is um, in Australia right now some academics looking uh, at facial recognition in particular and uh, they are starting to show what are some of the flaws in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and one of those academics recently pointed out that you can start to um, determine things like does this person look like they are potentially a sociopath or a psychopath or aggressive or irresponsible. These algorithms are based on models of like, say, 10,000 faces. We don't have enough data yet. And when the model is poor, it means that people from minorities, people of colour, you know, they start to get pulled aside if law enforcement are using this because the algorithm's working against them. Because Those it's of- concluded that criminals are over, uh, like people of colour are overrepresented in, in criminal statistics. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I think the world would be worse off if we started using technology for purposes like that. And already we see in Australia, uh, we are going to have a facial um, database of everyone's driver's license. We may have all forgotten that that was going to happen, but possibilities are I mean, as it currently stands in America, I think something in the vicinity of half of all American adults are in police facial recognition databases. That's from a 2016 study. Part of me was actually kind of surprised by how high that was. Jen, does, does that stat surprise you? Absolutely. Uh, what are these people doing exactly that they're all in a facial recognition database? Like that's a lot of DUIs, I imagine. <laughs> well, when you get when you come into the country, they take a photo yeah, of you in yeah. LA. Um, well, I actually found found this interesting because when I came into the country this time, they didn't take my fingerprints, which I was initially really excited about, but they did still take my photo. Um, so Does that I mean they've already got facial... your fingerprint on on file though? Because you you travel to the oh, states quite so a bit. so many times. But they actually weren't taking fingerprints from anybody. So I wonder if their facial recognition is just so good or they just didn't trust people a lot, which doesn't seem likely. <laughs> so maybe their facial recognition has just gotten so good that they don't need fingerprints Yeah, I was talking anymore. to one company and they said that they could get something like 93% accuracy or something now with with a, with a 
crappest photo ever. So, yeah. Jen, that raises some questions for you as a person. Where is the line for you where you would be comfortable with facial recognition technology being used? So obviously entering, exiting a country, that goose is cooked, you know, it's, it's happening. But what about um, marketers? What about walking into uh, stores and, and them collecting that information and using it to, to service you specific ads? Is that something that you as a consumer would, would like or would have rankles with? Hell no, no. Make it make it difficult. Like at least you know, make your marketing less creepy. Um, I'm like I'm okay with it on things like you know the iPhone 10 and on Samsung's phones where you know they look at the shape of your face because that's stored locally on the device. I don't want my yeah. I don't want the supermarket chains to have my face on their records somewhere. And, and have all of the ridiculous things that my son puts in the trolley associated with my name. <laughs> I just can um, imagine a future. Can you just imagine a future where you're like, you're on the toilet, you're using your phone, and then your phone's like Clippy from oh Microsoft. Gosh. It's like, hey, we just saw you. Would you like me to buy some new toilet paper for you? It's not a picture. It's not a future I want to live in. Where is your line, Ben? Is Because there, there is convenience attached to this, no question. Where is the line for you in terms of what you would use? The line for me is using biometrics as a form of authentication. I don't want to be like walk outside my house and like, you know, X number of government agencies know where I am. I don't want to walk into my company where I work and have them go, oh, we saw you arrived at, based on just my face. Like mm. I don't have to put a lanyard pass on a security thing. They just know that I'm there. Ben left at this time. Ben left at that time. Um, that's not a world I want to live in. All right. There is lots more of this in the podcast. If download this show, it is available on all good podcasting apps. And hey, if you're watching this on a screen as I know you are. And if you've got an idea for something you want the show to cover, head along to the ABC News YouTube channel, leave a comment, and we will follow up. Um, we love getting your suggestions. It's really helpful to know what interests you guys, and we're really keen to hear from you. See you then. Bye. Bye.